Stangibalisco here again with a little bit more uh, on the single sideband uh, instructional video uh, which I uh, did in relation to my book Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. Uh, it's uh, described in all editions. I have the fifth edition before me right now and the discussion of single sideband begins on page 434 and 435. Uh, what I have here is a rendition of figure 25-3 in chapter 25 which shows uh, a double, actually this is a double sideband suppressed carrier signal and this LO stands for local oscillator, local oscillator in the receiver. Now you will remember from the previous video <coughs> on single sideband in this playlist, Teach Yourself EE -E Miscellany, uh, I described how single sideband works. Basically this is where the carrier would be in an amplitude modulated signal. LSB is the lower sideband energy. Upper sideband is, or USB is the upper sideband energy, not universal serial bus, but upper sideband. And when you tune the signal in, um, you tune the receiver's local oscillator, LO, to precisely where the carrier would be in an AM signal. We're looking now at what an upper sideband, single sideband signal looks like when it's properly uh, tuned in with the receiver local oscillator the the frequency of the local oscillator coincides with the frequency of the suppressed carrier in the original signal transmitter that way all of these energy components here ranging from 300 hertz to 3000 hertz in this case above the carrier or local oscillator frequency. All these little components here beat or heterodyne against the receiver's local oscillator to produce the audio signal that you hear and it's a faithful reproduction of whatever was being sent at the transmitter. <clears throat> well, some people have trouble grasping the concept that you can send these elements out as radio frequency signals all by themselves without a carrier to ride on. But in fact, all they are is uh, electromagnetic signals, just like any other electromagnetic signals. The carrier is not necessary in order for that information to be transmitted. Well, let's get rid of this because we're understanding now that this is upper sideband energy right here, a typical human voice would look like that. Now, as time passes, uh, this um, <clears throat> waveform or curve would fluctuate and pulse up and down. If you've ever seen a spectrum analyzer display with frequency on the horizontal axis and, uh, and amplitude on the vertical axis. This dBm, by the way, represents decibels with respect to one milliwatt. So zero decibels with respect to one milliwatt is one milliwatt and minus six uh, dB, minus 12, minus 18, minus 24, and so on down indicates weaker and weaker signals, more and more attenuation. <clears throat> well, in order to demonstrate how this works, I did a little experiment way back when I had my Drake R4A and T4X. I don't know if you may remember those radios. The R4A was the Drake receiver. Drake uh, being the brand name. Drake like a duck. D-R-A-K-E. Drake. A well-known and highly respected name back in that day. The R4A receiver and the T4X transmitter were separate units. So you could send signals on the T4X in very low power or spot mode and actually listen to your signal on the R4A. Unlike today's transceivers where 
Generally, you cannot hear your own signal without a separate receiver. These two units, they could operate as a transceiver. You could connect them together to work that way using either the transmitter or the receiver uh, frequency control, or you could operate them separately. These were ham radios. Let's hear it for ham radio. That's how I got into all of this electronic stuff, and it's a great way to do it. Amateur radio, also known as ham radio. The term ham, as in hamming it up. Anyway, getting back to the discussion about single sideband, here is the upper sideband energy. Now, suppose that we tune this local oscillator somewhere else besides where the original transmitter uh, signal was, <coughs> where the original transmitter carrier, suppressed carrier, is. You won't be able to decipher the signal. It won't sound right. It'll sound what they sometimes call monkey chatter. I'm not sure where they get that idea from, monkey chatter, but it's unintelligible gibberish. Now here, it, it, what you'll hear is a voice that sounds unnaturally high-pitched. Here may be a voice that sounds unnaturally low-pitched. And then as you move the receiver's local oscillator by tuning the receiver, you won't be able to understand it at all. And when you get that local oscillator up here, suppose you tune that local oscillator so that it's just about right at the top of this signal. You'll in effect be listening to a lower sideband signal that's upside down. All of the voice components will be upside down. The highest frequency voice components will sound low pitched. And the lowest pitched frequency components, which are over here, will sound high pitched. So what you're going to have is inverted audio. Inverted in within the pass band of the receiver, which is approximately 3 kilohertz wide, or 2700 hertz is a pretty standard width. <coughs> You'll get inverted audio. Well, it sounds, you know, unnatural that way. <coughs> But what I did when I conducted this experiment in high school was I thought, what if you invert the audio like this, if you tune a, a signal in like this, and then tape record it. And so I tape recorded my own voice using the venerable Drake R4A and T4X separate combination so I could listen to my own signal. I tuned the receiver up here instead of where it should be and listened to that inverted audio and it sounded of course like monkey chatter. Well, I tape recorded that monkey chatter and then I played it back into my Drake T4X microphone input and transmitted that monkey chatter as a single sideband signal and then I tuned the receiver improperly like this again so that I was inverting the audio twice and I thought well I should hear then inverted inverted audio in other words upside down upside down or two negatives equals a positive is that right did it was it gonna work so I tried this and by golly it worked. It sounded just like it should if the receiver's local oscillator were tuned to the proper place. My voice was once again intelligible, and I wasn't terribly surprised by that. I wasn't really surprised by that result, but I thought it was really quite the coolest thing. So that's sort of, that's one way that you might um, you might, uh, what would they call that? Audio encryption? A specialized form of audio encryption 
where you invert a signal twice. Audio encryption. Uh, sometime, what did they call that? I believe they also called it scrambling. Scrambling. Not scrambling like a quarterback does in football, but scrambling like you do with eggs. You can do with eggs. You mix it up. You, you, you mix it up in such a way that it's unintelligible until you descramble it. Well, that's one simple way to obtain analog audio scrambling. But it's, uh, it's too simple, really. It's pretty easy to figure out. You can recognize that monkey chatter if somebody's trying to do that and invert it. But there are more complicated ways to do that, audio scrambling. Uh, maybe someday I'll make a video about that. But I did this just because I wanted to demonstrate how single sideband or SSB works and just learn a little bit more in detail about that. So if you happen to have ham radios that, uh, you know, some of those older ones like the Collins, I believe it was the S-Line 75S 3B and the transmitter was a 32S or something like that. Um, those were separate radios, also very well respected name. Uh, Collins radios. I believe Halicrafters may have also made some. Uh, it's harder to get them nowadays. If you do happen to have, though, a transceiver and a, and a separate shortwave radio laying around your house, <laughs> if you happen to have a lot of junk or, you know, good junk, <clears throat> You can try this experiment and an old-fashioned tape recorder. Try it and see. It's, it's sort of fun, and it illustrates the principle a little bit of single sideband. Stan Gibalisco, ham radio call sign W1GV, Whiskey 1 Golf Victor. You will find me primarily on the high-frequency 14 megahertz, 18 megahertz, 21 megahertz CW Morse code bands, and occasionally on a mode known as PSK31 or phase shift keying 31. You'll find me there too on those bands. Uh, maybe in the next edition uh, of this book I will talk about some of these digital modes or maybe a whole separate book. Digital modes for the electronics hobbyist or electronics communications hobbyist. You never know what I'll come up with next. I never know what I'll come up with next. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, saying 73 best regards from Dakota Territory, United States of America. Until next time, so long.